Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rachel Wagner. I am the Assistant Director for Graduate Admissions at the University of Utah, and I am also a CTE PhD student here at Utah State University. So I have a what I consider pretty unique perspective of both the administrative side of higher education as well as the student perspective. So my presentation today is on being the institutional ally, how the role of administrators um, can help support college students and their success through policy and practice. So our first goal today is to identify the various roles that administrators are going to play in the successful student life cycle. From admissions to graduation, administrators and educators as you know, have their fingers on every aspect of the student experience. But with any system, there are going to be a lot of challenges. So we're going to highlight the obstacles that students and administrators and educators face. We're going to highlight in particular, though, administrators and students, as you, most of you are all educators and understand those obstacles that you face. And we're going to talk about how we can devise effective strategies to overcome those. We're also going to devise or discuss actionable ways that we can build a supportive campus culture together and how we can make a difference in our specific roles and make a positive change and a lasting impact in creating successful student journeys through higher education. So having outlined our objectives, let's talk about the specific roles that administrators play in shaping a student's college journey. First, administrators tend to serve as navigators or guides. The college student's experience is going to be a just nebulous, confusing path, lots of different alleys and paths that they can take, and administrators are going to guide students through that path. They're gonna help them figure out their courses, their extracurricular activities, where they're going to live, what they're going to do, what their major is going to be, you know, where they're going to go after college because college is confusing. Higher education is confusing and a lot of these students are really, really young. They are 17 year olds, 18 year olds. They have no idea what they're doing and they're honestly just wanting to know what's for dinner. So um, administrators are going to guide them. They're gonna help them figure out their career trajectories. They play a pivotal role in ensuring that students are on the right track to achieve their academic and their personal goals in a lot of steps. Then we have the role of the de-escalator. College is a challenging environment and there are a lot of stressors present. When conflicts or issues arise, administrators will often step in and mediate these conflicts and resolve issues. That means if we have a student who says, I was supposed to get an A in that class, but somehow I got a D, well, maybe their advisor needs to step in and see, well, did the student actually deserve a D? Did they do the, class, the work and show up to class? Or was the professor just mean? Hmm. You tell me. Um, and just ensuring a conducive environment for learning and growth. There's always going to be conflict in life and having a mediator, someone who might be more experienced in the higher education arena can be really helpful to have as a mentor and a guide. Administrators are also the pillars of support. Beyond the academic realm, they'll provide moral and sometimes emotional support, although that's not necessarily what an administrator is there for, it can often be an inadvertent goal. They ensure that students feel valued, heard, and encouraged throughout their journey. And then in the role of a liaison, administrators can connect students to a myriad of resources. They're going to bridge the gap between students and faculty, students and alumni, institutional structures. They're going to ensure that students maximize every opportunity available to them, provided that the student is willing to meet them halfway. And not to be overlooked, administrators are a knowledge base. They are the go-to source for students with questions ranging from policies, course requirements, you know, what housing, housing is available over the summer. Knowledge is pivotal in guiding students' decisions and administrators are often seen as the college encyclopedia. So administrators wear a ton of hats. They guide, they support, they connect, they inform, they play a vital role in a student's college journey and they often can be the key to whether a student's journey is going to be successful or not. So now that we understand what the journey is for a student and what the role of an administrator is, let's talk about some of the obstacles that students and administrators will face. Student obstacles in higher ed. As we said, college is a significant transition. It's a huge undertaking. It can be terrifying. Um, a lot of students have that fear and that anxiety when they are in college. They 
it arises from academic pressures, social integration, the challenge of being in a new environment. And a lot of times there's not even really a name for what they're feeling or they're fearing. We've all experienced that fear of approaching a professor asking for a change of a grade, that fear of going to a new place, of talking to someone new. That fear is real and it's legitimate and students feel that all the time and that can be an obstacle to their success. Lack of familiarity with campus resources. We have always said, there are so many things available on this campus, why aren't students taking advantage of it? Well, do they know where those resources are? Do they know how to navigate what's available to them? A lot of new students don't know how to access those resources. They don't have, the way, they don't have ways of accessing them. They don't know how to find them. They may not be accessible to them at the times that they can find them especially for newcomers and especially for students who might be international students, students with disabilities, students who um, maybe have dependents. So resources, while we as an institution may say there are tons of resources available on this campus, they may not actually be accessible to the student populations we're trying to reach. We have policy limitations as well. Whether they're perceived or legitimate, policies can feel restrictive. They limit students' freedom and their access to necessary resources. And adding responsibilities. As students progress, they juggle more responsibilities from academic to extracurricular to personal. And balancing these can be challenging. Now, we as adults to some extent, or if we're ever finished growing, can definitely look back at college students and say, all they have to do are balance their academics and feed themselves. How hard is that? But if you think back to when you were 17 and 18, life was tough back then. And that's a struggle. It's, it's tough to balance your academics and we have to meet students where they are. So while students face those challenges, administrators have their own unique sets of obstacles to navigate. They have policy limitations, just like students feel bound by policies. Administrators can also find themselves bound by the rules that they are, the regulations that are set forth by the institution, by the state, by the nation, that they're bound by when they're trying to assist students. We often feel like our hands are tied by, by management, by institutional priorities. You know, we've all had students come to us with issues and problems and say, I really want to do X, Y, Z. And we say, well, that's just not something that we can do right now because that's just not a priority of the institution or that's just not something that this program is gonna pursue for you at this time, I'm so sorry. We fight burnout and apathy a lot. You know, we have a very empathetic role as administrators and educators, and we want to give all of ourselves to our students. And in doing so, it is really, really easy for us to feel that burnout. And the high demands of our roles can just easily lead us to reduced engagement and reduced enthusiasm. And a lack of knowledge. Despite, you know, all of our education and thinking that we have a lot of knowledge, and we do have a vast amount of knowledge, there are times when even we administrators and educators may not have all of the knowledge and we may be unaware of certain changes or resources and we may not know what we don't know. And so in highlighting these obstacles, we're not just identifying challenges, we're laying the groundwork for understanding, empathy and collaboration. So we can move towards actionable solutions once we recognize the obstacles that we're facing and we can recognize them within our own roles. So now that we've discussed these challenges, we can pivot towards solutions because we need to build a proactive culture where everyone feels supported and where we're actively taking steps to ensure that our students feel a network of support and success. So let's first talk about policy implementation. I love the phrase, do no harm, because that is just something that guides my work in administration, especially in what we call the dark days, January, February, March, where it's snowing and it's dark and it's cold and everything is busy and I don't wanna do my job. Um, but it's so important to adopt this harm reduction approach. We don't want, everything we do needs to be in favor of the student. Nothing we do should be harming a student's approach to their academic success. Every policy should first and foremost ensure that it does not inadvertently or directly harm or hinder a student's journey. If a student asks us to make an exception to a policy, are we saying no just because it's a regulation that's in place and we've been just doing it like that's how we've always done it? Or does the student have a reasonable request and we're just saying no to saying no? Are we harming that student's success by saying no because that's how we've always done it? So these are things we need to consider. Equitable, auditable actions and exceptions. 
two questions I ask myself every time I make a decision is, is it equitable and can I defend it in an audit? We need to ensure that our actions and exceptions and policies are equitable, meaning that they're fair and just for all students, and these actions need to be auditable. We need to be able to defend it whenever someone questions our decisions because they are going to come under question. Whether by higher ups or by peers, our decisions are going to come in under question. So we need to make sure that whatever policies we are enforcing, that we can defend our decisions and how we decided to enforce them. We need to be able to review policy. Continue improve, continuous improvement is key, especially in higher education and the way things change so rapidly right now. We need to be proactive in identifying areas where policy can, and more importantly, should be reviewed to better serve our students. This is a huge part of making sure that our policy is equitable. For student support, we can think beyond our role. As administrators and educators, it is so crucial to think you know, almost holistically. We need to go beyond just our individual scope, beyond our job description, and be thinking about the bigger picture and think how can we go above and beyond and support our students and see our students more than just a single name on our class roster or a single name on, in our inbox, but what is their pathway? What is their journey to success? And what am I doing? What are the actions I'm taking to ensure that they are successful in their educational journeys? Connect with campus resources. Collaboration is so powerful. Administrators and educators should actively connect students with a multitude of resources available on campus. So whether that's academic support, mental health resources, career guidance, you know, any kind of resource on campus you can think, linking students to these resources can make all the difference. And proactively linking them can be the extra step that that student needs. If we can predict the next question a student is going to ask, if we are able to think, okay, the next thing the student is gonna need is X, Y, Z, and I can give them their email, phone number, and location and connect them with a person in that department before the student even realizes that that's where they need to go, we will have a lasting impact on that student's journey. And whether they remember it or not, that's okay. We've still had an impact on that student. And create a safe space. And while I did put create a safe space for all students on here, I think we should also create a safe space for our peers and our colleagues. Um, it's just every student and our colleagues as well deserve to feel safe, valued, and heard. And it's our duty to ensure that our interactions and the environments that we create are safe spaces where everyone can feel they can speak up, seek help, and be themselves. It is so important to be able to share how one feels, share if something makes you uncomfortable. And it's very important that our, all of our students feel that the place where they come to learn and come to develop themselves into the person they're going to become and decide on their future career paths, that they feel able to fully explore without hesitation. So in conclusion, building a supportive campus culture is a collaborative effort. It's going to take administrators and educators working hand in hand, developing careful policy, impl policy implementation and a deep commitment to student support. And we need to recognize that every interaction, every decision, all of those shape a student's college journey. So how can we make a difference? So let's start with educators. As an educator, you can connect and collaborate with your administrators. It is essential to see your administrators as partners in the student journey. It is not us versus them, although I know we as administrators definitely do our part in starting that fight. I promise we are on your side as well. We are all teammates with a shared goal, student success, especially during you know, the admission cycle and student enrollment. It is so easy to get into this mindset of you know, the department won't do this and the Office of Admissions won't do that. And that just tears us apart as administrators and educators, and we're not providing that shared front, that united front to students. So it is really important for us to come together and provide that united support to our students. Identify gaps. Understand where your knowledge might fall short in terms of administrative practices and policies, and where you might lack resources as an educator. So don't hesitate to reach out to your administrative resources or to ask for further help or training. Build relationships. Forge meaningful relationships with campus partners because these relationships and connections can provide valuable resources and support, not just for your students, but also for your department and for you and your colleagues. 
and ask for exceptions where equitable. If a policy doesn't serve your students equitably, don't be shy about seeking exceptions. Advocacy can make such a huge difference in every single student's pathway. And if you find a policy that you're like, this just does not serve my student population, why is it being done like this? Bring it up, reach out to your dean, reach out to your director, see why it's being implemented the way it is. Because the worst someone's going to say is, no, we're not going to change it. The best possible scenario is that someone says, yeah, you're right, there is something wrong with this policy, let's revise it, let's refresh it, let's make something new. For administrators, we need to better understand educators' needs. We need to engage with our educators more and understand what they require to better support their students and make sure that we are predicting what our educators need in terms of their administrative support so that they're not coming to us every minute asking us for support. We need to predict what they're gonna need next. And that goes to stay one step ahead. Anticipate their needs by understanding the tra trajectories of both educators and students. Knowing in advance what resources they might need can be invaluable. Maintain our strong network foundations. So our administrators form the backbone of the campus network. So we need to keep our relationship with partner institutions and organizations robust and collaborative because administrators literally run the systems and the networks. We need to keep things strong. And policy evolution. We, our policy shouldn't be static and administrators are the ones to implement and evolve policy. We need to question policy, review it, revise it, redo it to ensure that our policy remains relevant, supportive, and equitable for all students. And for everyone, I think every single person in this room can say that we have taken uh, something personally, whether that's an email or a statement said in a department meeting, not every hill is worth dying on, so pick your battles. Choose the battles that will make the most significant positive impact and remember the root of why you're here. We are here to support students through their higher education journeys and every action we take should be done in pursuit of student success. So if a battle is not going to lead directly to a student being successful in their higher education journey, we can probably let it rest. Equity and audit checks. Again, always ask yourself, is it equitable? Can I defend it in an audit? Combat burnout. Now, I feel like combating burnout, this one, taking active steps to care for yourself and those around you, um, I feel like we all say this to each other but never actually take those steps for ourselves. It's pretty hard in academia to get people to slow down and take a minute because we're all adding to our plates constantly. But try, if you can, to take a minute and breathe and take a look at your mental health and emotional health because your well-being is paramount and you can't serve students to your best if you're not at your best. And understand your impact. Always remember that every single decision, every single interaction holds the potential to significantly influence a student's success. So, in essence, every single person on campus, regardless of their role, whether you're an educator or an administrator, we have a piece of the puzzle in affecting a student's success in their academic journey. So together, we can collaborate and we can ensure that all of our students have as successful a journey as possible. So it's time for some discussion. I do have some discussion questions, but I wanted to open the floor up to some questions first, if anyone has any. All of the educators know everything. All right, so I can ask, in what areas do you as educators feel the need for further training or resources um, to better support your student populations in particular? Everyone's like, our students are so well supported. They're all great. Go ahead. I'll just say online um, learning at um, the university, but it's essentially, at least in my department, um, all of the PhD students are online based currently. And I'm just very new to that. So I've had some experience giving online instruction for a lectures for a class, but as far as that's the main way of communication is very new. So would you say you would prefer more instructional design assistance, like for online learning? I would say maybe some like tips on how to 
take on a graduate and PhD level student that's fully online. Okay. Does anyone have anything that they'd like to share to that or any suggestions? Well, I know like the online students here are like assigned and it's like, like not an advisor, but like kind of like he's like they're supposed to be like a support, like so like, email or text you like at the beginning. But like I I've never used that. <laughs> so but that's the thing is like I feel like when you're online you feel limited with the resources that you can use. Cause like even though there's like counselors on campus like you don't feel like you have access to like the counselors or like like you can't just like go to the clubs and get like the support that way so like even like reaching out like online you can't it's like hard to tell your students like these resources are available mm -hmm. for you as you but not to you because you're on the computer so i think that that's kind of like the hard thing is like how do you connect them with like the resources that help them when they're not it's almost like we need to develop a new gateway for online students specifically, providing resources for them. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Any, anyone finding area? Mm -hmm. well, I was just going to say, I'm a, I'm a PhD student here teaching in my last year, but I was here during COVID and um, it, everything was online. And I just remember what was really helpful was that I would have a weekly meeting with my mentor and we would meet on zoom every week and pretty consistent with it and those honestly i feel like i got more out of those meetings than i got out of my classes out of my all my other stuff just because it was the time to like talk and even though it wasn't in person i could still have a one-to-one -one personal like mentoring relationship and my advisor could like monitor how I was doing and what I needed and could like just you know based on the context or whatever the issues were could work it out with me so I mean it's nice because I'm a PhD student so there's a time to do that mm -hmm. um, you can't do that for like undergrads as easily but um, yeah I, I just think that like you can still do a lot through Zoom. Just having that regular consistent support it's awesome. So what, what sort of things do you talk about? Like, do you like talk about like progress in class or like progress on like just anything or? Yeah, progress on my on my research mostly. Okay. So like, where am I at with my research papers? How can he answer questions that I have? If I'm struggling, how can he connect me to the people who can help me? Um, yeah, it was mostly research, but also like everything else. Okay. So, Dr. Hall. Yeah, um, I did that with my graduate students. I did weekly brown bags on whatever kind of resources or ideas or work research related teaching resources. We discussed different things about the discipline. But something I'm experiencing and I've asked help for since last year was mental health accommodations. Mm -hmm. Because like when you work with the Disability Student Services Center and you get accommodation requests, usually it's about note taking and videos and captions and making adjustments to your course teaching. But I was like, what is a mental health accommodation? Because it didn't come with anything specific that needed to be done to address a student. And so it was me just reaching out to that individual at the Student Wellness Center and asking them, what can I do to support the student? What are things I need to be aware of? Because there wasn't anything specific. Interesting. But it's like, oh, well, if the student doesn't show up, this might be some of the reasons. And I'm like, okay, so like, should I reach out to them if I don't see them in class for a week? Like, how do I support that mental health journey mm -hmm. that they're going through without having them tell me necessarily what was going on, right? Because there were some limitations on what was going to be shared. So, like, for me, the mental health trainings, the resources, knowing how to deal with a mental health accommodation was all kind of a new territory for me. And I'm yeah. maybe for some other faculty it could be new. And that doesn't sound like an entirely complete resource either. Right. It sounds like you had to do a lot of research well, yourself like, for okay, that. What is this accommodation? I reach out to someone like, can you please tell me more about what this accommodation entails? How can I support this student? Because usually it's like with the DCR, like it was providing notes, mm -hmm. longer time on exams, working with somebody 
on closed captioning resources or something that made a lot of like, okay, there's a process for this. Mm -hmm. But there wasn't a process. Yeah. Because it's not so straightforward mm -hmm. with each individual student. But I did have to reach out and ask because I wanted to make sure I knew how was I going to help the student through the course. Interesting. And it was really interesting. Yeah. And I went to some other faculty and just said, by chance, have any of you experience a mental health accommodation? Is this something like, how did you approach that when you got one too? And like, not very many in my department did. And I even reached out to journalism and asked them if they had any accommodations that way too, just to kind of broaden my scope of faculty to learn what can I do as a faculty member? Yeah, that would have to be dealt like case by case yeah. for sure. Yeah. Interesting. It was. Mm -hmm. So this is a little bit of a different topic. In the beginning, you talked about obstacles, and I think there's one um, that's become newer, and it intersects with central administration, department administration, and serving our students. So one of, one of these new challenges is the way people work today is very different. And as a department head, I have noticed some problems where some offices have changed their work mode and they're working remote, uh, working from home, maybe working different hours. And the timeliness of responsiveness to our queries has plummeted mm -hmm. to where I'm now finding it difficult to address my students' concerns in anywhere near a timely fashion. We're talking months to get a program of study approved, for example. Months? Yeah, no, months, plural. So, and the, I understand the challenges that some of these offices have where the job is one that can be done from Florida or Guam or, you know, down the street and hire them from your, from your uh, garage office. Um, but the, so I'm saying this, this new challenge of this new way in which we are expected to work is, is creating a, an additional set of obstacles for us as we serve our students. And so I, I'm hoping that as we progress in the next year or two and continue our, our post-COVID adaptations, that we develop better ways of, of handling those different ways to work so that we can improve how we're serving our students. So I granted this, I was anticipating maybe a little bit of a different audience, like a lot of department heads and such in here, and I'm only seeing a couple. Um, but that's something that's on my mind. Um, and as you talk about administration, I think we should think about there are different elements of administration in this uh, ecosystem of your university there's the central administration and then the satellite administrative units across campus. And they have to work together in order to serve the student. That is a very fair point. And I actually did not consider that when creating this. I was thinking of central administration. Yeah. So thank you for pointing that out. I will revise this. Anyone else? Well, does anyone have any examples of actions that they've taken themselves or within their departments to actively promote a student's success where they've noticed a gap previously? Well, I can speak to one of what's mm -hmm. on right now. Um, you're a director of graduate admissions. Our graduate students um, often feel a bit lost in the sea of forms and deadlines and advisory councils and research and weekly meetings and and thrown a little bit into the deep end. Um, so we are working this summer for our department to create a Canvas page that is kind of built in a modular format. When you're at this stage of your degree program, this is these are the resources you're likely to need. When you move to the next stage, these are the resources. Um, so that it's provided in sequence as they go through their full and complete degree experience, uh, along with some other resources like a, a repository of, and a guide for all mental health stuff, for example. Um, my hope is that this would be a one-stop shop, a place where our graduate students know 
Um, if I have a question, I can come here and the answer is likely to be here, whereas right now the answers are scattered everywhere. If it's mental mm -hmm. health, they go to the CAPSO site. If it's grad school form, they go to that site. Well, they're also employees, so if it's something related to that, they go to HR. It's so scattershot that they get lost, and I'm hopeful that this structure will help them um, as they go through. I don't get, no, we're still building it. So in a couple years, I'll tell you. Sounds like an amazing resource. Though. Yeah, it sounds amazing. I went my grad school in Purdue. Uh, our like grad manual for the department is 150 pages. Yeah. Um, here's this deadline. You might want to look at this, but it's in, you no, know, a 25,000 word document. Yeah, yeah. That, and we, that's that's been the struggle. We've been telling our students, look at the handbook, look at the handbook. They never look at the handbook. We tell our faculty, look at the handbook. I have to admit, there are things in that handbook that. I had to raise my hand yesterday and say, I don't know that was in our handbook. Um, so I hope it, as students, it's also, to use a phrase from this morning, meeting students where they're at. They are now much more comfortable with online digital resources in these kind of web design formats, searchable, uh, handing them a 150 page document is, is not gonna really work for these folks. Dialing down the information actually needs probably five or six pages. Yeah. Yep. Am I on time? Yeah. I'm out of time. Well, thank you all so much. I really appreciate your feedback. Um, and if anyone has any questions for someone who's purely central administration right now, feel free to come talk to me. But. It has been great hearing your all's um, points of view and attending the conference so far, and I hope you enjoy your next session.